Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are all doing really, really well. So something that has been a theme on this channel over the past few months is my reading slump. So having a lot of trouble getting out of a reading slump this year. And as I always say, one of the things that can get you out of a reading slump is reading lots of short fiction. So I thought I would do a few short horror recommendations today that if you're like me and you're struggling with a reading slump, you can dive into some of these books and hopefully they'll help get you out of a reading slump as well. So on this list I have book recommendations and also author recommendations because I didn't want to just talk about every single one of the books that they've put out, but I do have a couple of author recommendations and pretty much everything they write is a little bit shorter. So novel uh, novellas and um, you know a little longer than novella length, kind of around the under 150 to 200 page mark. So these are light reads that you can get through in just a couple of days and you know hopefully it can help snap you out of that slump. So the first recommendation that I have is actually a beloved book that I read pretty much every year and that is The Melancholy Death of Oyster Boy and Other Stories uh, by Tim Burton. So this is Tim Burton as in Corpse Bride and Nightmare Before Christmas. He's a fantastic writer and the stories and the poetry and all of that sort of thing that are in these books are fantastic. They're very very short. They have great illustrations, really spooky kind of creepy illustrations and um, you know I just enjoy the schnoz out of this book and a lot of the stories have deeper meaning as well so really short you can sit down and read this you know just in an afternoon have a good time with it get the deeper meanings in the stories enjoy some creepy artwork and yeah, I, I'd recommend everyone picking this one up. Like I said, it's a reread for me every year. I usually kick off my sort of Halloween season with this book every single year. And next up is a book that I've talked about numerous times on this channel, and that is Autumn Crow by Cameron Cheney. I actually think that I should get a new copy of this book because this one is not, not in the best condition anymore. So I love the heck out of this one too. So another recommendation that I have to get you out of reading slumps is to read short story like anthologies. So if you're reading a short book of short stories, I find that's really, really helpful. I just finished another one that's called The Scariest Stories You've Ever Heard, Volume 2. And I had that book as a kid and I remember I read it until like it literally fell apart and I was sent this book as a gift from uh, one of the Etsy shops that I frequent a lot of the time and reading this book, I actually just finished it not long ago, was such a joy. So the other recommendation that I have is if you are a Halloween lover, pick up a Halloween book, something that's very cozy. If you love Christmas, pick up a Christmas horror book or a Christmas short story book. It's going to bring you lots of serotonin and make you feel happy and cozy and it's going to help lift your spirits and get you out of that reading slump. So with me being a Halloween lover, of course, a short book of short stories is just the ticket. So Autumn Crow is fantastic. Clocks in at about 162 pages and the stories are fantastic. And again, much like the Tim Burton book, a lot of the stories have deeper meaning as well. So definitely if you haven't read Autumn Crow, which if you're watching my channel, likely you have, but if you haven't picked it up yet, go out and pick yourself up a copy. We're coming into spooky season again for 2022, so perfect time to go pick this one up. So in the short story category, I also have like true ghost story books. So if you really enjoy uh, ghost stories of the area that you live in or ghost stories of a particular area. I do recommend going and picking up short books of short ghost stories that are true ghost stories. So for this I have uh, Screech Ghost Stories from Old Newfoundland is a really good one to pick up. Uh, I'm from Newfoundland so it brings me a lot of joy to transport myself back to my like where I grew up and the other one is Fables, Fairies and Folklore of Newfoundland and uh, again this one was fantastic to pick up and it just transported me back to the land of the fairies and the ghosts and the stories. We have a really deep storytelling history in Newfoundland where at a time literacy wasn't very high so everything was passed down by word of mouth and a lot of the stories end up in these sort of anthologies and it's just 
it's so cozy and it makes me feel so good. So that's another recommendation is definitely picking up short books of short stories of true things that happened in an area that makes you really, really happy. And next is just a very short little book, but it really packs a punch, and that is Goddess of Filth by V. Castro. So I actually don't have my copy anymore. I'll pop up a picture, but the book is only like not even a full size, like it's not even you know, like a full-sized uh, book from top to bottom, but it's also very, very short. So little, little tiny book and you can get through it in, you know, a day or two and it's it packs such a punch. So this story is a story of basically a Ouija board that goes wrong. So if you're into that trope, that's definitely one for you to pick up, but it also has a lot of deeper meanings of feminism and it's within the Latina life experience. So I, enjoyed this book so much. It was on my top reads of 2021. So if you haven't had a chance to pick this one up, it's it's really good. And like I said, it packs a punch. So if you're in that reading slump, it's probably going to bring you right out of there. And next up is another really cozy uh, Halloween sort of story, and that is Candy Coated Murder. And this is book one uh, that's part of a larger series. I didn't go on to read the rest of the series because I found that the book um, even though I enjoyed it and it was super cozy and it was super short, um, it, you know, I might pick up one down the road, but it just wasn't something that I wanted to immediately pick up the next book. But having said that, if you enjoy movies like The Good Witch, where it takes place in this little tiny town and it's super cozy and everybody knows each other and the whole thing. This is definitely one for you. So this revolves around a town that Halloween is like their thing. It's very much a tourist area. It's a small town, everybody knows everybody. It has all of the cozy feels, but it revolves around a murder mystery. So this woman uh, and her mom, their neighbor who was a really cantankerous lady that nobody liked ends up murdered and I gotta say that by the end of this book even though it had all of the cozy feels and it kind of was a little bit slow going through it really had a bang up ending and I, I really enjoyed it so this is another one that for me takes place during Halloween period in a Halloween type town um, definitely something that was right up my alley and it clocks in only at about 142 pages so again this is something that you can sit down and read in an afternoon it was a lot of fun and like I said this is uh, the first one in a series so if you really enjoy this one you can go ahead and pick up another one right away or you can pick up another one down the road so I really enjoyed this book and definitely want to recommend it to anyone else who loves short Halloween stories and next up is a spooky short Halloween book and it's called Dark Harvest by Norman Partridge. And this one has very sort of cozy Halloween feels, but it's kind of a, a pretty gruesome story, but it takes place during the Halloween season and it's a very short one. I read this, sat down and read this in one day. So this is another story where I'm kind of starting to see a bit of a theme running through here that it has a lot of deeper meaning. So very short, but packs a heavy punch. And it definitely has an ending that I didn't see coming, which for anyone who's in a reading slump, having that, that slam bang ending is really important. So if you're looking for something, again, that's a Halloween story that's short and cozy and has all of the things, this one is definitely high up on my list. And the last book recommendation that I have before we move on to authors is Magnolia Lane by Donald R. Guillory. So I spoke about this author in my last video as well, and this book was fantastic. It was super, super short. I downloaded it onto my Kindle for just a couple of bucks, and um, it really is a fantastic Southern Gothic story. It has a lot of deeper meaning in there. Again, here with the deeper meaning that has to do with race relations, both back in the 1800s and in a current period as well. So this tour group gets stuck in a historical home that's haunted and uh, it's during a storm. So the road gets washed out. It has the, the thunder and the lightning. They're stuck in this place and they start getting picked off basically one by one. There's a huge body count in this book. It's very gruesome in places. Um, and it's also very fast paced. So if you're into Southern Gothic horror, you like that sort of thing, slasher books, I would definitely recommend this one. Uh, I don't think this book gets talked about enough and I really enjoyed both the book and the author's style of writing. So definitely check out Magnolia Lane by Donald R. Guillory. 
And I had a couple of authors that I wanted to talk about specifically because pretty much everything that these authors put out is very, very short. So the first one is Brianna Morgan. So she writes fantastic horror stories. A lot of them have a lot of diversity in them. I've read The Livingston Girls by her. She put out a short anthology, uh, I believe last year, that was called The Trick or Treater that I really, really enjoyed as well. So her books tend to come in uh, under the 200 page mark. She's had a couple of books come out even since I read those ones that I haven't had a chance to get to yet. So definitely go check out Brianna Morgan. Um, she's a fantastic writer. She's also just a fantastic human being. I follow her on Instagram and she's put out a couple of books that I haven't even read yet. So definitely going to be checking out more by her and she definitely has fantastic short novellas that I think everybody is going to enjoy something that she has to offer. And next up is definitely a go-to author for me. So last year I read Kill the Babysitter by Stephanie Sparks and it was one of my favorite books that I read out of the entire year and it was only like 100 pages long. So this year I picked up more books from her and uh, she's definitely around the, you know, 150 page mark and everything that she puts out I enjoy. I gobble it up. She is a fantastic writer. She's a fantastic human being and she is the queen of the twist ending. So I've talked about her free frequently on the channel as well. I just also received a new book from her that's called Mandy. Can't wait to dive into this one. I'm going to be starting it tomorrow. So um, definitely keep an eye out for an upcoming review on the channel of Mandy. Um, but she's put out, like I said, Kill the Babysitter was one of my favorite books of 2021. She's put out The Stepchildren. What else? Scream Queen, which is uh, like a, a pageant queen sort of story, a harvest queen story that I read not long ago and I really, really enjoyed it. It. and like I said she's she's one that just does a slam bang ending for every single one of her books so definitely check out Stephanie Sparks all of her books are great and like I said her story is clocking at about 150 pages so nice short horror that's not gonna take you long at all to get through and the other books that I wanted to recommend uh, are in a series. It's the Pray Lie to Eve series by Lydia Peaver. Lydia, of course, is the host of Typical Books here on Booktube, and she's a fantastic writer. I love her writing style, the language she uses, um, just her natural way of speaking and, and telling stories is fantastic. So I've only read the first volume out of this series, but I believe there's three now. And I just love Lydia's story so, so much. She's fantastic. And so short anthologies, definitely something that's uh, helped me in the past get me out of those writing slumps. So go check out Lydia Peaver. Um, she's done the Pray Lied Eve series of anthologies, and she also has stories uh, in other books as well, including the booktube anthologies that come out every year. So first with Local Haunts, and then with Serve Cold, and there's a new book that's going to be coming out in the not too distant future. So keep an eye out for Lydia's story. She's absolutely fantastic. And the last author that I wanted to recommend was Regina from Regina's Haunted Library. So she puts out a lot of short fiction and it, it just spans such a wide variety of stories. She does a lot of uh, sort of horror romance. She also does short story anthologies. And her goal this year in 2022 is to release a novella every single month out of the year. So she has a wide range of stories and lengths and everything that you can read. And I've just recently started picking up her work and I'm really enjoying it. So I'm going to leave a link to Regina's channel below along with links to everyone else who I've mentioned that has um, a booktube channel as well. I'll have all of their links down below. So then you can go check out their work, make sure you're supporting them. So that's it. So that was a pretty extensive list of things that I've read re semi-recently that have helped get me out of reading slumps um, or have helped me get my reading done even while I'm still in a reading slump. So reading shorter books or like I said shorter anthologies, shorter ghost stories, uh, books that are based during periods of the year that you really love. If you really love summer then you can try summer horror or in this case, I've given a lot of recommendation for short Halloween horror. So I hope you found something on this list that will appeal to you and will help you out of a reading slump. 
hopefully none of you guys are experiencing a bad one right now because I know I am. I know I've talked about this extensively on this channel this year. So if you guys are, are struggling with a reading slump, let me know down in the comments. Do you enjoy short horror? Do you find it helps you uh, get your reading done when you're not really in the mood? And also you can uh, hit me up with other questions or comments. Make sure you give me a thumbs up and click the subscribe button and the bell for notification. But until next time, stay spooky everybody. Bye.